Is work your key priority or your sick kid? You have to slow down and ask yourself in that moment, what's the key priority there? Not this list of 10 things you need to get done and your kid is fit into there as well, but in that moment, and might I add that it might not be that your kid is the key priority in that moment. It's identifying that in that moment that's going to help you go, okay, then I need to stop feeling guilty about putting my kid in front of the TV. Like that's not helping me go back to this meeting and feel energized and and engaged and be able to do the work I want to do. Oh my God, is your life just so crazy and you're running from here to there and you're doing this and stuff's happening at home and stuff's happening at work and you just want some work-life balance? Stay tuned because I'm going to give you the one question you need to ask yourself to find that sense of balance that you are craving. Welcome to the Surviving to Thriving podcast that helps women leaders in nonprofits get out of survival mode and thrive in both leadership and life. I'm your host, leadership development coach, Kathy Archer, and I help women leaders enjoy impactful leadership. Work-life balance is something that has been touted in the media for years. We've talked about it. We've craved it. We've given strategies how to find it. But the truth is, There is no such thing as work-life balance. And if we switch the words to life-work balance, that doesn't help either. It is impossible to hit that balanced, ED, balanced point. We will always be balancing, I-N-G, our work and our lives. If you look at anything, anything out there that looks like it's balanced, think about a ballerina on a tightrope. If you're watching the video, you can see me. If you're listening to this, you can't. But we are constantly wobbling. And if you look at a ballerina's toes, you're going to see that they are constantly, all the little muscles in there are moving because they are balancing. They are not static on that tightrope. And the same is true for anything else that appears to be balanced. It really is moving back and forth with whatever's happening, whether it's the wind or the stress or the something pushing it. It's always moving back and forth. So what we need to do in leadership and life, especially as nonprofit women leaders, is continually be thinking about balancing as an ongoing act rather than a state we get to. We will never get to that state where our day, our work, our week, our life is balanced. Instead, we need to be thinking in our head, how am I balancing all of the things that I'm responsible for? Because in truth, it's not just work and life. There are many plates or balls up in the air that we are juggling all the time. And we can't just sort of look at one side and the other and decide that it's balanced. It doesn't work that way. So we need to take a more intentional approach to this. Instead of work-life balance or balanced, we're going to be looking at balancing and counterbalancing. If you are holding something and it gets heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier, You're going to eventually fall over if you don't put something on the other side and bring it back. If you think about those weigh scales that sit in the grocery stores, I'm not sure they sit there as much anymore, but you put something on them and there's a weight on the other side and that's that counterbalance. So when you are busy, that's that thing that's pulling you one way. There's meetings and there's appointments and You're working on accreditation and a crisis hits and you're being pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled. And what's happening is our family life is being neglected or our wellness is being neglected. We're not taking care of ourselves or maybe the community things that we are responsible for or feel committed to or want to be involved in are being neglected. How do you bring that back? If you're way over here, how do you pull that back? The opposite is true. If your kids are sick or your mom's sick or something's happened with the dog, or you're not feeling well, or there's an event going on, and there's a family reunion time, and you're really busy over here, sometimes it's easy to sort of slip and not be as focused at work and not be concentrated on that. So you need to figure out how do I get back there? Sometimes, sometimes you need to stay there for a little bit longer. That's the intentional part. We think I need to divide my time up between work and life. Eight hours here, eight hours there. I'm going to spend this amount of time with this kid, this amount of time with this kid, this amount of time with my husband. doesn't work that way. It's not an equal divided up. Today, it's this amount. Tomorrow, it might be different. 
And what's going to help you to find more of a sense of balance is when you're more intentional on that. For these two weeks, I have a really big project at work. We're pulling a conference together. I'm really busy. I'm going to be late some nights and I'm going to be over here a lot more. And then after that, I'm going to take two or three days off, regroup, regain my my first, my own wellness, put me first, and then I'm going to put some intentional time into my kids and my husband. That will give you more of that feeling of balance rather than in those two weeks beating yourself up because you're not home for supper. You're not going to be home for supper. You're going to be there and that's okay. We have to let that be okay to find more of that feeling, that comfortability with being balanced as long as, again, we're intentional about it. How do you be intentional about it? You step back and check in. I can't tell you how many clients I talk to that say, it's just for this little bit of time, but I keep saying that. Or I keep saying it's going to be over soon, but it's never over. And that's when you have to step back and go, okay, then I need to do something about this. Work is never going to go away. The to-do list is never going to stop. The meetings, the invites, the the things that are happening are are never going to disappear unless I do something to stop them, put a hold on them, or maybe delegate some of them cross some of them off your calendar. You need to be more intentional, more responsible, response-able. I'll try and remember to link that note in the the notes below. Uh, Response-able, choosing the response to some of those things so that you're better able to find that sense of, oh, I feel like I'm more balanced right now. Counterbalancing is making deliberate choices to compensate for those demands of both your work and your personal life deliberate choices. You need to slow down, go through that inner guidance cycle, pause, step back, do some of that pondering. What's going on in my life? What's in my calendar? How is my body feeling? How are my relationships with my staff? How are my relationships with the people I care about in the rest of my life? Look at the workload, look at the to-do list, look at the demands, look at the reserves in your tank. That's all of that pondering. Then you've got to get to that place where you go, hmm, I need to make some shifts here. That's that that pivot place where you're changing your mindset. You're changing some of the things in your calendar. You're deciding to put a little bit more time into going for a walk every day, even though you're busy. You are making sure that you're making a note to drink more water. You're shutting off the TV a little bit earlier, getting to bed a little bit earlier because you know that sleep is incredibly important during this busy time. Those are those things that you're slowing down going, okay, this is the plan to get me through these next two weeks. Again, being intentional, being deliberate about your choices, your energy, so that you're counterbalancing all of that stress that's happening. All of those events, all of those meetings, all of those things that are going on, you're counterbalancing them. Maybe you've got a dance competition this weekend with your kid, or it's swim meet weekend and you're traveling and you got to be part of the, the evaluation team. And it's like, that's a full weekend event. If you think you're going to do that weekend event and come back Monday morning, just tickety-boo and dive into stuff, you might be sadly mistaken. You're going to need a little bit of time to counterbalance the effects of that. You're going to need maybe it's just an extra hour Monday morning, or maybe you're just going to make sure that Monday morning schedule is a little bit lighter. But what are you going to do to regain some of that that you've lost? Maybe it's letting go of doing the floors that weekend because you mop the floors every weekend. Uh, this might be the weekend you don't mop the floors. It's those little things that when you're more intentional are going to help you counterbalance the effects of everything that's going on. So balancing doesn't work. It will never be static. It's not balanced. We're looking to be balancing and we want to counterbalance. So how do you find that counterbalance quickly and easily? Again, pause, ponder, pivot. You're going to get back into action. But here's the one question that at any point in time when you're feeling off, when you're feeling pissy at a meeting or your body's so tight and stressed it's like ready to blow up or you feel like you're ready to fall apart or you just don't have any energy left or you're looking at your calendar and you're like, oh my God, how am I going to get through this next week? Here's the one question that's going to help you find that sense of balance. What can I do to counterbalance the effort, time and energy put in here to pull me back to my other key priorities? Let me say that again. What can I do to counterbalance the effort, time, and energy put in here 
to pull me back to my key priorities. Notice that last word, two words, key priorities. Asking yourself that question is first going to have you identify the key priorities. What's most important in this moment? You got a sick kid, you're home, you're feeling the pressure because you're supposed to be at a meeting and you're feeling frazzled and your kid's needy and whiny and you're feeling this, I just wish life would smarten up and I could get through it easier. You're feeling off balance. When you stop in that moment and ask that question, what can I do to counterbalance the effort, time, and energy put in here to pull me back to my key priorities? Is work your key priority or your sick kid? Which is it, right? You have to slow down and ask yourself in that moment, what's the key priority there? Not this list of 10 things you need to get done and your kid is fit into there as well, but in that moment. And might I add, that it might not be that your kid is the key priority in that moment. It might be the meeting that you need to have, the thing that you need to do. But it's identifying that in that moment that's going to help you go, okay, then I need to stop feeling guilty about putting my kid in front of the TV. Like that's not helping me go back to this meeting and feel energized and and engaged and be able to do the work I want to do. It's actually making me feel split and guilty and crappy. So I'm going to put my kid in front of the TV. I'm going to let go of that because honestly, they're fine. They're, you know, yes, they feel whiny, but my key priority is this. An hour ago, I made sure that I had all of those things in place to make sure that my kid was taken care of. I got their stuffy and I made sure they had some Tylenol and I snuggled them and read them a book. Now my key priority is going into this meeting. The whiny kid who, yes, I love dearly and I know they feel crappy and I wish, you know, that I could be there for them. It's just dropping down in the priority a little bit for a moment. And that's okay. I'm going to put my energy here. And this is counterbalancing, right? In the morning, an hour ago, you put a big chunk of energy into making sure your sick kid felt okay. Now you're shifting this way. You haven't completely dropped the sick kid. It's not like you've, you know, put them in another room and never to be seen again. But it's counterbalancing. And when you can choose more intentionally, more deliberately, which way you're leaning, that's what's going to help you. And what do I need to do to bring myself back? How long have I been leaning this way? Is my back starting to get sore because I've been leaning this way too long? Are people starting to get annoyed because I've been leaning this way too long? Does it feel right to me to lean that way? No, I don't want to. But what else can I do? Whoa, what else can I do? I can pause, shift into that pondering, that deliberative mode, that thinking mode, that being more intentional about going, actually, what can I do to change this? I can say no to that meeting. I can shift these priorities. I can set this boundary. I can tell my boss how I'm feeling and ask for some help. I can delegate some things. What can I do? Again, back to being response able. What can I do to shift things? Asking yourself, what do I need to do to counterbalance? I'm falling this way too far. I've been leaning this way too far. I need to go back this way. How can I make those leans one way or the other not so dramatic? How can I balance in a, I feel like a penguin wobbling back and forth. How can I balance in a, in a shorter sort of, what's the word? Lane, I guess that's not quite the right word. But how can I make my leaning to one side less dramatic? How can I be more in line with this back and forth where I feel like I'm feeling better about being in balance more often, feeling more balanced, even though I know I'm always balancing and doing the work to counterbalance. When you slow down and be deliberate, be intentional, and you ask yourself that question again and again and again, what can I do to counterbalance the effort, time, and energy I'm putting in here to pull me back to those key priorities? When you ask that question throughout your day, the end of the day, beginning of the day, once a week, whatever it is, the more often the better. But you will get better at counterbalancing and the leans from one side to the other will be less dramatic and you will feel more balanced, even though we know we're not really balanced, but you will feel more balanced because you will be doing more balancing intentionally. And that's, my dear, what's going to move you from surviving to thriving in both your leadership and life. Go make the rest of your day awesome.
If you found today's episode helpful, then you are going to love the training library. Many women leaders in nonprofits wish that they had a coach or a mentor to help them, but they don't believe that they or their organization can afford it. Oh, but you can. Inside of the training library membership site, you will not only get access to affordable and easily accessible ongoing personal and professional development training, you will also have access to a leadership coach at your fingertips. That way, when you hit those inevitable challenges that leadership will bring your way, you'll have both the resources and the support to navigate your way through them with confidence, composure, and while keeping your integrity intact. To find out more, head to kathyarcher.com slash library. If you are enjoying the show, I'd love it if you could leave me a comment or a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks for listening. Go make the rest of your day awesome. Awesome.